It seems so obvious. Many of us in the Midwest think we know everything there is to know about snowblower safety. But injuries connected to snowblowers skyrocketed last year, and that prompted Target 5 to ask why. Lisa Parker found revealing new information, and she's here now with more. Lisa? And Rob, with these kind of injuries, there's always a temptation to dismiss them by blaming the victim. We know that because we almost skipped this story. But the closer we looked, the more questions we found. Why is it that snowblowers continue to have such a high injury rate? Then we met a guy in Arkansas who may have just cracked the code. Pictures from before the accident tell the first part of this story. I love baseball. That's like my sport. Why 14-year-old Kenny McGill lost so much. It was crazy. Like, I was freaking out. The day he lost two inches of one finger and had another completely reattached. At first, I didn't even know my finger was gone. And then, like, I took the glove off and, my, and I was like, whoa. Whoa. Not that snowblowers can be dangerous. Kenny says he, along with the rest of the world, knows that. Every time it snowed, pretty much I snowblowed, so it wasn't like something that was different. It's how this accident happened. Away from the obvious threat, Kenny says, and with the engine in idle and blades off, he went to clear the clogged chute. It was kind of something like right out of a horror movie. Through a thick glove, two fingers gone. I hate it. It makes me so mad. His is one of 9,000 snowblower injuries reported in 2010, 20% of them also amputations. Many who report turning power to blades off, but still getting sliced. A mystery this man is trying to solve. We are talking about some rather devastating injuries that can occur. At the University of Arkansas, Dr. Bart Hammig reviewed more than 30,000 snowblower injuries and says the problem frequently starts out the same. Usually it is wet snow that gets clogged. Wet snow is very difficult to dislodge. When chutes get clogged, people get frustrated and sticks don't always work in dislodging the heavy snow. That's when thousands of people every year resort to the worst idea. They stick their hand down the chute and try to dislodge the snow. And that's where you get some of these severe injuries. Even in cases where a dead man's switch killed the engine. Why? Dr. Hammig's research indicates inside all that clogged snow, rotational force is built up just enough to do damage even when the engine is cut off, something users have never heard. We know when that's dislodged, it can actually rotate um, a quarter or half a turn, which would probably be enough to do damage. Snowblowers don't contain that warning. Many do follow voluntary standards, which suggest the word danger and or a pictorial of what can happen. When there's any injury like this, a crushing injury and a devastating lifelong injury, you know, we investigate. What the McGills and their lawyer found, they say, led to a lawsuit alleging the lack of a warning here by the chute and the blades inside it makes this machine un unreasonably dangerous and defective. If the manufacturer did everything in its power to make sure that machine was safe, then we might not be talking. But they didn't. Okay, there you go, my friend. You have fun now. Kenny McGill is trying to pick up the pieces of his life as a normal teenager. A lot of things are really bad. I just... I mean, I don't like to say it because I don't like to show my weaknesses. A rough recovery for his parents, too, who say they struggle with what they now know and worry others do not. It changed all of our lives. It changes the way you think. Every little thing your child does from that point on, you're more worried. Briggs and Stratton, the maker named in the McGill's lawsuit, would not comment. No one has figured out why injuries skyrocketed. They almost doubled in the year 2010, but Dr. Hammock's study found the most common person to be injured is not a young, inexperienced user. It's a man in his 40s or 50s, many using two stage throwers who said they had no idea there was a second impeller or a blade inside the chute. And no one we talked to suggested that snowblowers are bad and we need to go out and buy shovels, but clearly there's a pattern here that many years that needs to be reversed and it probably starts with walking away from any time it's clogged. A warning you need to know. Thanks, Lisa. Yeah.